to 10 calm down. This is what probably someone has said at least to some of you when you were feeling, I don't know, emotional in a ring. And whoever said count to 10 to you, that person was kind of right. So why am I saying kind of right? Well, because that person was asking you to become better cognitive and to articulate your emotions better. Most precisely, that person was actually asking you to move the experience from the limbic part of the brain to the prefrontal cortex. And now I kind of need to explain some few things so you start to figure out what is going to happen here. The limbic part of the brain, that's a very shitty part of the brain. No, I'm serious. So you see someone, they think something, they say it. They think something is funny, they laugh. We call these people limbic people. And FYI, we can all work to become less limbic. But at the same time, the limbic part of the brain, this shitty part of the brain, is also what saves our lives. Imagine a car is about to pass and hit you. You don't really have time to process anything. The limbic system reacts and saves your life. So pretty much, it ruins our friendships, our relationships, but it saves our lives. And, FYI, bunch of you don't know me. I like abstract things. I like abstract data. So, at this moment, whatever I say, it's absolutely your responsibility if you're going to accept it as a truth, how you're going to treat it, how you're going to collide it with your own truth. Just please, don't be that naive. Okay, back to the story. Remember the person who said to, hopefully some of you, calm down, calm to 10. I said that that person was kind of right. So not completely right. Something here is wrong. The wrong thing is the 10 seconds. Believe it or not, we don't need 10 seconds. We actually need, and the data is super clear, 30 seconds to adequately move whatever has happened to us, the experience, from the limbic part of the brain to the prefrontal cortex. And now, when we move the experience to the prefrontal cortex, it's like an executive mach machine behind our forehead we can do some very cool and tricky stuff. <coughs> First of all, we can choose more adequate reactions to whatever has happened to us. That's number one. Choose better reaction. However, there is a number two. And this one is a bit tricky, but you guys are so cute, and I'm going to tell you. However, what I tell you stays here, you know, whatever happens in cosmos stays in cosmos. So, the second part is that we can all, like all of us, choose our emotions to whatever has happened to us. We do get to decide the emotions. We don't have to accept them as given. We just need to move the experience to the right part of the brain. So, it turns out that all the emotions that we have, there are just signals in our brain and we do get to decide how we're going to react and what we're going to do with them. And this opens a bunch of questions for us artists. For me, for all my colleagues performing tonight. For example, let me give you an example. When we improvise, when should we use the limbic part of the brain or when should we use the prefrontal cortex in order to have a good improvisation? Or, when we create a piece of art, when we take months, maybe even years, and we go home and we think about something, and you know how they say, the secret is in the details. And I really do think that the secret is in the details when we create art, however, if the truth is that the secret is in the details, that actually means that we all are very much relying on our prefrontal cortex, which means that we all 
do get to decide what we're going to feel when we create art. So I'm going to deal today with what do we choose as an emotion? What do we decide to feel when we need to create art? What fuels our creativity in the artistic process? And may I ask you all, how you doing, my talented musicians? Maybe I would prefer to be special rather than happy. Maybe I would prefer to be special rather than happy. Creativity is typically modeled as a result of rational decision making or as a function of some objective and quantifiable factors, such as general education or experience. However, there is the possibility that emotional drivers determine creative processes and portray the creativity of great achievers typically as a result of various psychotic anomalies. You know, high performers throughout history usually will learn about the amazing things they did. However, the data is very clear. And it shows that high performers who did amazing things, they kind of... High performers who did amazing things, they died unhappy. And the reason for that is, number one, it's hard to live up to your own expectations. And if you are identified, you all, as a high performer before you're 20 years old, I'm sorry to say this, but you're going to be disappointed with your life at the end of your life, most probably. Second reason, if you do a ton with your life, when the party, inevitably ends, well, you know what happens when the party inevitably ends. You're going to notice. composers. The name of these composers 
hopefully someone still in this audience remembers these names. So the first one is uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Remember the guy who wrote ta -ra -ra, ta -ra -ra, ta -ra -ra -ra. You all know it now. Uh, the second one, his name was Ludwig van Beethoven. That's the guy who wrote ta -ra 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 great soundtrack. Uh, the third one, okay, this one is a bit tricky. The third one, the name was Franz Liszt. And uh, that's the guy who wrote, what the hell did he write? Oh yeah. Ta-da! Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Should I tell you? Yeah, okay, you're too cute. So, I'm telling you all of this because they say if you want to understand something better, you need to think about it. If you want to understand something better, of course, you need to become kind of nerd and learn a lot about it. If it's connected with arts and sciences and you want to understand something better, sometimes you might even have to adopt new habits in your life with that particular thing. However, the secret, believe it or not, the secret if you want to understand something better and look it in, is that you need to share it. Go share it and you will never lose it. Share 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 it.